Welcome back to another episode of The Human Condition. This is your host, Dia, and today we've got Adel with us. Adel, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me on, honestly. Thanks, and uh, I'm super excited to dive into this topic today with you. Uh, you've been doing great work in Dubai and in the UAE, um, uh, men's work. Yes. It's something that not a lot of men have been exposed to, nope. and to be honest, it's not very mainstream as well. So I'm super interested to dive deeper into that topic with you, but to start off with, tell us a little bit about yourself. Right, so uh, yeah, my name is Adam. Um, I'm originally from London, uh, born and raised in London, Southeast London. Uh, my dad is from Pakistan, mom is from India, and they both came to London when they were like in their teens. So having me in, in, an, in a, at a time when there weren't many brown people around mm -hmm. um, caused a lot of confusion for me growing up. Um, we had to, my parents had to run away to be together because one's wow. Hindu, one's Muslim. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so they ran away to a different part of London but still far enough away from their family so there was no there were even less brown people so um my upbringing was confusing because i, I had less culture i didn't have my grandparents around i couldn't speak the yeah. languages that yeah. my parents can speak and uh, i had loads of white friends so um just from the from the from the outset i was confused as to who am i as a as a man as a boy mm. you know i wanted to be white and i was confused why white kids didn't like me and my and brown friends couldn't relate to me and even when i did connect to my family i was different Mm. I was an outsider mm. to my mum's side of the family. They saw me as Muslim and to my dad's side of the family who were a lot more welcoming to me. Uh, I still couldn't conversate with them in like, oh, do Punjabi or anything like yeah. that. So I yeah. still felt like an outsider. Interesting. You know? Interesting. Um, so, you know, growing up that that was a big thing for me is like, where do I stand culturally? Yeah. So I've always yeah. been a bit of a, an outsider, a bit of a black sheep as a, a brown man in a brown family, but with really Western morals and ethics and upbringing, mm -hmm. you know, so the you know, the beginning of my man, men's journey starts with feeling like a bit of confusion there. Yeah, and yeah. like I'm not enough. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. And dude, I mean, I'm sure that that kind of like instigated a lot of the work that you, you started doing later on as well. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about, before we actually start, I keep forgetting this, but before we start, we're gonna turn on the incense, it's gonna keep our time. Yes. Um, it's been something that we started doing. I do love incense. It just adds another vibe now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Ceremonial. All right. Of the yeah. <laughs> we begin. <laughs> okay. Now we can officially. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now we can start. I just hope it stays burning. Cool. Um, dude, there's a lot to unpack there. Yes. Uh, I think I can relate to some of what you're saying there because, you know, growing up um, as a third culture kid in a way, like I didn't grow up in Lebanon. I'm Lebanese, but I didn't grow up in Lebanon. I was exposed to so many different cultures uh, growing up. And it was kind of like, what do you subscribe to? You know, there's a bit of an identity journey there uh, mm -hmm. that we all take in terms of. Just finding out, you know, who we are. Yeah. Um, for me, growing up in music, there was, you know, I, I was kind of idolizing all these rock bands, and I wanted to, you know, become like them. But at the same time, you know, I'm I'm this Lebanese guy that's, yeah. you know, that's that has family and traditions that yeah. is almost not sort of like connected to. So I think it's an interesting phenomena that's happening to a lot of us as we become more global and as we, we you know, we live in those uh, big global societies. Uh, but tell us a little bit more about, you know, how that manifested into the work that you do today. Right. So painting a story, you know, my, my upbringing was one of me feeling insecure. Mm -hmm. um, I lacked confidence. I... I always felt like I was in the shadow of my father, who was very strong and very dominant, mm. and I was very soft and very, I guess, weak in comparison. Um, he wanted me to be the tough guy, and he had to be the tough guy because if he didn't, he'd get beaten up by skinheads and white white guys in in, in London. So, Survival. Yeah, he yeah. had to survive, right? So he <clears throat> that's all he knew when I was growing up. Um, so you know, moving up until you know into my teenage years now, and this was something the the shadow that I lived in, I just felt sad um mm. like you know that i wasn't enough for my dad um he wanted me to be particular way and he wanted me to follow in his footsteps mm. business all these things but i had dreams of things i wanted to do i wanted to be in bus in like you know the corporate world and, and be yeah. a man in the office that's, yeah. what, that's, that's what i wanted um and actually my parents divorced when i was around 17 18 and and i went to university around the same time and we went through a really rocky time because i stayed home with my mom and my sister and it was just it was just challenging. My sister was 11 years old at the time, so it was, it was, she lost her best friend. She lost me as well wow. at the same time because I went to university. And it was just a very difficult time over those years. And I eventually came home because it felt like the right thing to do. And it did feel mm -hmm. like it was a bit of like, you need to come home, you know? 
Um, but mum did say, don't go, don't leave university, just, just go to a local one. So I did, but I didn't realize this until recently, but I resented that so much. Mm. All my friends were at university, staying out, partying, doing all mm. the things, and I was at home, you know, looking after my mum and my sister. Mm. But even then, I didn't look after them. You know, I didn't know how to be this person. My dad told me I was the man of the house. Mm. And when I first thought about being man of the house, I was like, oh, that sounds exciting. No, what the hell does that even mean? Mm. You know, how can you be 17, 18 and being told you're man of the house? Mm. And I do feel that's something that, that follows a lot of men. It's like, okay, you're, you're, the, you're the son, especially in, these, in, the our, in, our, in our cultures, yeah. right? Yeah, it's like, this is what you need to do. Yeah. Right? You're, the, you're, you're the man now. It's funny though. You what does that, that even mean, right? right? Yeah. I heard that a lot, like, be, you need to be a man. It's time to step up. Mm. Man up. Man up. <laughs> yeah. I hate that phrase, but it's used so often, and I understand where it comes from, mm. but I never felt man enough. And again, only through recent work on looking at inside of me, I realized that I had so many things that I did to make myself feel man enough mm -hmm. that weren't really masculine traits at all. They were quite toxic. So it was things like spending on credit cards, making myself feel like I was that I was the man in, in, in the club yeah, or yeah. I was, you know, yeah. I, I had things I could, I don't want someone to pay for me. I pay for myself. Mm. I only recently got out of debt, 15, 20,000 pounds worth of debt with credit cards and wow. buying a car, you know? And getting sucked into that cycle, right? Of, right. of uh, being validated through, yeah. through this kind of behavior. Validated through women. Yeah. You know, I, I've, I spent most of my life being insecure around women. I was, I was everyone's friend. I was never mm. someone that always desired. When I started looking after my body and, and you know, what I ate and started mm. training again, and that was because of a woman who kind of picked someone else over me. And I was like, I need to hit the gym. Mm. Um, I took advantage of that, you know, and I, and I did. And I will go into, sh into the archetypes later as well. And there was a magician at play mm. that kind of knew that he could use that. And I wasn't sincere in it. At the same time, I was perceived as a good guy. So I'm, I was, if I look, look at it now, I was more dangerous than those guys that you can see, hey, he's, he's a douchebag. Yeah. You know, because no one thought of me as a douchebag and I didn't, I didn't even think of myself as a douchebag. So go forward many, many years now, like things at home are getting pretty bad. Like mum struggling with some things. And eventually me and my sister get kicked out of the house. I was at home until 31 years old thinking that I had to be at home to support. But I got kicked out of the house. Interesting. And I was like, I am in this home looking out for at least trying to support. Yeah. Fine. I get to live my life. I had no problem leaving. But when I did leave, I was also in a very rocky relationship because I had cheated on my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. um, and I had done that, to be honest, with every one of my girlfriends. I cheated on everyone. And I say that because I have to own that. I have to own that, right? And have, you, have you gone into that and understood like why, yeah. why was that a trade? Yeah, yeah, yeah for okay. sure. And it's again, it's about being loved, validated. It's, 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 it's this need, desire to be desired, mm. you know? Because I didn't love myself. So I left home. And at the same time, I couldn't manage the difficult conversations with my partner because obviously she was hurting. Yeah. And I just felt like, why can't we just move forwards? Very masculine, like, come on, let's get over it, yeah, let's yeah. move forwards. And I, up, I left, I went to Morocco for a retreat, a one week retreat to Morocco uh, for yoga and surfing. Was that your first one? It was my first retreat, yeah. Okay. And okay. I picked yoga and everything because I wanted to go somewhere where there would be older people. And no one that I would, it wouldn't, if I just went to Morocco, for example, and just had a good, I probably ended up having a good time going out, getting drunk and doing the same, doing same, the same things. things. Yeah. So I went in somewhere yeah, yeah. where there was an opportunity for me to really just stop, rest, look within and, and speak to some wise elders. Mm. And uh, I did. And actually one of the, the turning points of my life was when I met a lady called Kate, who is a Reiki healer. And she was friends with the, with the ladies that ran the retreat. And I went to speak with her. And what should have been an hour session became, was three hours long. Nice. And what happened in that session, without me even expressing to her that me and my mom had a, a quite a volatile relationship and that I was actually in Morocco because of my mother, she decided to take on the energy of my mom. Now for those of the listening, it might sound a bit mm. like a bit weird, but uh, just bear with me on this one. Um, she took on the energy of my mom and she we went through a bit of a role play where she became my mother and she allowed me to express to her as my mom all the things I wanted to say that I couldn't say or haven't said. Wow. And it was so healing, but so challenging at the same time. 
This was a part of myself that I didn't realize existed within me. I didn't, that's where all the- You don't tap into, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah. understanding of the resentment that I didn't know yeah. that I held. And also, how do you verbalize that? Right. The pressure <laughs> it's, that yeah. I felt, the pressure that I felt, yeah. even though that I didn't, I could have done more. Yeah. I did what I knew, I did what the best I could. I mm. still struggled, I still had anxiety, I had uh, stress, I had this feeling of wanting to be enough for my dad, for my mom, for my partners in life to do a society, but I didn't realize how much pressure I held, how much things I held inside of me mm. on my shoulders. And one of the things she said to me, she, she had this singing bowl. And she goes, this singing bowl represents all of the love that you gave your mom that you didn't need to, that you can take back. Mm. And she goes, you can take it back right now. Obviously metaphorically, you know, mm. I started crying. I said, how can I take back mm. this love? She said, it's okay. I know you love me. Remember, she's speaking as my yeah, mom. Yeah. And I took it back and I swear to God, <clears> the <throat> feeling of relief from my shoulders, wow. profound, it was real. You know, I really felt like oh, a sigh that you feel, yeah. it was real. And she just hugged me and I cried to this woman that I just met. Interesting. But it felt like she was my mom and it felt yeah. like I could really feel what it is that I needed. And one of the things that I said to this woman as my mom was, I don't feel like you show me love, and I don't feel the love that I need. I know that I'm a grown man, but I, mm. I, need, I need to be loved. Mm. And she talked to me and she said, you know, all these years you've been trying to parent the parent. You've been trying to parent your mother, but that's not how the energy works. Energy yeah. flows ancestral yeah. down and you'll always be the son. You know, you didn't need to do all the things that you did. And when I mean, your mom showed you love the way that she knows how. Now, many of you listening will appreciate this. It's, yeah cooking and like keeping the house clean it's and true. tidy and looking yeah. after you and we don't always see that true. I wanted mum to say how's your day how's mm. work going you know and really understand and really know and when I speak to her again she's like hey what happened with that thing with that person and that, that's me that's my way of receiving love yeah you know hey let's I booked a restaurant let's go for dinner I never got that interesting but I appreciate now what it is that she did and the takeaway I took from that moment was be the love you want to receive you know Embody that, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We could, well, a lot of us that are struggling are externally looking for love, acceptance, success, mm. all of these things, but we're already embodying them and we have that choice. Mm. We can already feel it. And if you want more love in your life, go be more loving. Mm. You know, step out there and go do those things. And that was my lesson. 100%. I subscribe to that like 1 million percent, especially when it comes to manifestation, right? Like if mm. you're trying to attract something in your life um change your life even like as in 180 degrees shift the, w the one way to do this is to 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 live that manifestation in your mind first and then watch the world as it comes together and, and actually unfolds yeah. um and brings you closer to that um there's you know th that's a beautiful journey to take and i think being vulnerable is yeah. is, is is important there and i think as you know a lot of men we don't get into that vulnerable state like let alone with people that we know and then a stranger, a complete, you know, somebody that you don't even know and, and to have that exchange is, is a very powerful thing. Yeah. But let's touch on the state of vulnerability. Yeah. Um, a lot of my friends, men friends, guy friends, uh, brothers and all that. So, I, you know, growing up, I didn't, I didn't have any siblings. Um, so yeah. for me, connections with friends were more important. Yeah. They, they were kind of like my extended family. So, and I still have a lot of them up to up to today as well you know deep connections um and even with the with with, with my guy friends and and, uh, and boys and who i know for many years there's only very few moments that i can remember being completely vulnerable with them yeah. right and and that kind of like brings me to to the idea of reflecting of how powerful is men's circles yeah. you know and why why do we need to do this work and i know that you've been doing this work here in dubai as well so tell us a little bit more about that perfect segue into this right okay <laughs> so when i left morocco and went back home what i realized was that i felt like the everyday guy the everyday man living in living in the uk going to work mm. you know living the the life which was prescribed to us by society by society our parents and everything and on the way we built up uh, a tolerance to stresses and we've been told things like you know man up Mm. Um, don't cry and be stronger mm. and we just push our emotions down um, and we find other ways to express ourselves drinking, partying mm. um, just other vices, gambling thrill seeking, 
all kinds of things that you can think of. And I was a man that luckily I didn't ever go down a place of like self harm and suicidal thoughts. Thankfully, yeah, but suicide is huge. Of course, men are the more, main community. Of course, yeah, men are four times more likely <coughs> to commit suicide than women, right? And it's a big, big topic. And it, what I realized that I need, I want to help more men mm. like me who aren't necessarily even aware that they need help to speak up. One conversation could change your life. Yeah. You leave something go unchecked for too long, before you know it, they're, drink, they're starting drinking at 4 p.m. rather than 6 p.m. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. it's 12 p.m. And then before you know it, it's morning and they, they need it to survive. Yeah. You know, or they started having really bad thoughts where they think they shouldn't be here. So I left Morocco. I came home. It took me a few months of integration just to mm. unpack everything that happened. And I thought, I want to start a men's circle. I want to join one. I want to speak to other men. And I looked online. Mm. I just Googled it and I just found a men's circle with a guy in the UK and I joined his circle with the intention of learning how to run a men's circle. Mm -hmm. Little did I know he would become my men's coach. I would learn nice. much from him, take so much from the participation of a, of, a, of a closed men's circle where 10 men would speak every week for two, three hours and bear their souls. Nice. And you know what? The, the main thing that comes out of this, the healing, the healing that comes from this is when someone says, oh, me too. Mm. Yeah, and, and completely random, like, you know, a random connection there that they reflected back to you as well, yeah. right? They realize it's... That holding that space yeah. for you that you can just be vulnerable and let go and you can cry. And some men would scream and shout on the call because we gave them that space. Yeah. And we'd have yeah. put a hand on our heart and we'd just let them know that we're there for them. We'd have mm. hand signals that my coach taught me. Like, you know, when some man's speaking, if you do this, it means, yeah, me. Mm. Well, I do this with my men's circles. Like, brother, I'm nice. with you, I hear you. That's what we need, mm. you know? Okay, yes, there might be the things- The brotherhood, can, right? Yeah, the brotherhood, <coughs> man. There might be things that we can do further down the line where we can actually help and offer advice and solutions. But all we really want to do is be heard because we're so scared to let go. We're so scared to be mm. vulnerable. So I ask you, if there weren't many men that you could be vulnerable with, who were you vulnerable with growing up? For myself? Yeah. Um, I was, it's, very, it's a very good question. I was, I was more vulnerable through my music. Mm. So for me, creating a space that allowed me to express emotions was writing music so i i wasn't and and to be honest it was only learning later on in my life in my life that i was able to be comfortable to being vulnerable with people in general like men or women yeah. um because i was the kind of like a bit of an introvert when it comes to feelings and i kind of channeled those through the music that i wrote yeah so that was that was my journey with wow. uh, that's beautiful yeah. man and that's actually quite nice because there is a, you can still look at that as a, a quite a creative and positive outlet yeah. for yeah. your emotions, you know, whereas I feel like typically men are drawn to some of the, the darker mm. coping mechanisms. True. And know? let's talk about that coping yeah. mechanisms. Like what, what, what are the, I mean, of course, you know, drinking, yeah. uh, gambling, yeah. going out and showing off, yeah. especially like living beyond your means and yeah. getting in debt and all that, you know, that, that whole kind of like facade that you try to bring on. And, and it is in a way, the narrative that's told to us by society, yes. you know, and, and you're trying to always, I guess, the majority of men try to live up to a standard, right? Like, like you're saying, like, man up, be stronger, uh, you know, who's more successful? And it's, it's, there's this competitive nature between yeah. us. Yeah. But, and that's a very vicious cycle. And I think yes. getting out of it is, has a lot to do with understanding who we are and understanding who you are as, 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 as a man and as a human. Um, and really rooting yourself within your moral compass, in but a way. How do you get there? That's it's the that journey, right? right? Yeah. So on the yeah. way there, you don't even know you're on the way there. Yeah. So I paint a story of my 20s. I was out every Friday and every Saturday. Same, After work, same drinking, me. partying, <laughs> yeah. getting off with girls, yeah. and, like, you know, and being, being in relationships. I, was, I, I love relationships, but I also loved all the attention that I was getting from other, other women. So that didn't really work out. So coping mechanisms were, when I felt down, and I still, to some degree, have this, I want to eat, mm. right? And we just, ah, okay, well, I'm going to, don't, we don't recognize that what we're That's doing, pattern, this yeah. is emotional eating, yeah. right? And we don't realize that we're doing that. We can binge eat. I can go for a tub of Ben and Jerry's, like yeah, yeah. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> right? Same. Cake, pizza. Yeah. And if I, if I now, yeah. if we look back and do a little bit of like, you know, regression back to our childhood, <clears> when we were, when we done something well, mm. we were treated to what things. Mm. You know True. what? If you do good, I'm going to go buy you some cake. That's a connection that you develop in your mind. So there's 100%. a connection to, I'm yeah. feeling sad, I want cake or I want pizza. <laughs> that's and true. again, that's a new, that's a new uh, revelation for me. Yeah. And I still do it sometimes, but that I'm more true. aware of it now. Yeah, so yeah. it's about becoming aware of the coping mechanisms, right? Um, and other things like 
pornography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and those kind of things. Like, what I encourage the men that I work with to do is every time you do something like that or you eat or whatever it's going to be, just stop for a minute. Just check in with how you're feeling. And even if you do carry on with what you're doing, yeah. just bring awareness to that moment. You know? Bring awareness to that moment. Yeah, yeah. Are you eating this cake or are you doing this act because Where's you're it feeling coming from? sad? Are you looking for a hit of dopamine? What's happening here? Yeah. These coping mechanisms, if you left unchecked for too long, can spiral out of control. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then it can move on to other things. And look what happened to me. I, ended up, yeah, I was also an emotional spender. To make myself feel good, I'm going to go buy myself a pair of jeans or a mm. t-shirt or I'm going to go and just go get drunk with my friends mm. and I want to get that that high. You know? and, it's, and it's validating that empty space inside that, you know, the, the, where is it coming from? And I think yeah. you've said something early on as well that be that, you know, if you're looking for love, be the love that you're looking for. Yeah. Be that be that thing that you're seeking in life and yeah. it'll attract yourself to you. Yeah. Um, let's 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 talk about the masculine energy right now. Right. And, and, and in society as well. Why is it is it more complicated to be a man today? in your opinion than being a man like you know 10 to 20 years ago no. and in the sense when you you know for me personally when i think of my grandfather i never really saw him as an anxious person i never really saw him as somebody who's confused he was very kind of like you know direct very <laughs> very strong um and is it that in today's world there was just a lot of uh, maybe expectations or you know a lot more pressure on, on the men that are growing up today or there's something else that's going on what's your opinion if you ever saw your granddad when he was alone yeah, I'm no. sure you would yeah. have seen a different man <laughs> okay what I think is happening today are the same things that were happening 50 years ago I think there's just more exposure mm. we see more mm. social media means that we are able to see every person that is successful you know we can see we, we, we have a direct comparison to so many things mm. That man's got six cars or he's got a, you know, the new Jeep that I don't have and I want those things and he's living the life, you know. Um, I can look at you and say, look, he's got all these followers, he's making music, this guy looks cool, like he's got good look and I want that. Yeah. You have more access to comparison. comparison. Yeah, yeah. But what is happening is a shift at the same time. I'm hearing and seeing more men that are voicing mm. that they're not okay. There is a, a huge drive in men's mental health now. This month is Men's Health Awareness Month. Yeah. 19th of November is International Men's Day. Like, come on, this is good, you know? And I don't want any man to feel guilty for feeling mm. these things. It's not about, okay, women are important. To, no, it's, I get that. But guys, you need to step up and start speaking up about mm. how you're feeling and be okay with that. And what I find is the struggle is that as much as women may want this, women don't also know how to handle it. Interesting. You know, luckily my partner's amazing. And when I like, and I'll go into a real life story now. On Sunday, I had an anxiety attack. First time in my life. Wow. Right. And I did not know what to do, what to expect. I was panicking. Mm. I was scared. I felt closed. I felt these feelings of, I want you to come out of my skin. Like it was just a really mm. weird feeling. But my partner's had these before. And she knew how to hold space for me and calm me down. Hold me. I felt like a little boy, I felt like mm. a child. And I, and I was so conscious during that time, so I also felt a little bit ashamed. I can't be going through this. Interesting. You know, how can I, how can I, I'm meant to be the strong one. I'm meant, she's, I'm meant to be supporting her, you know? But she held me. And I have no shame in saying it now. Like, uh, thank God. I'm so grateful. Yeah. You know? But the reason why I bring this up is because a man like me who didn't think that I could ever have something like this, I got my shit together. I thought I was cool, everything mm. was good. But it, happened and the signs were there weeks running up to this fatigue you know just feeling a little bit overwhelmed from time to time body aches yeah yeah guys listen to your bodies listen to yourself 100%. Take, some, take some time out yeah, yeah. otherwise your body will force you to take time out. yeah and now I'm, now I'm a little bit scared of getting this anxiety attack again so this week took it off barely did any work you know and when you work for yourself like we do yeah you can feel like you shouldn't take time off yeah. And we don't deserve it yeah. because I'm not there yet. I haven't done it. I've got to do more. Like yeah. all the hours in the day. I didn't go to the gym. I didn't um, do anything on like Canva or like yeah, yeah, yeah. anything. I've just done a few things here and there just to keep me, you know, when I felt okay. But it's so important to tune into yourself and, yeah. and, and 
just understand what's going on. It's very interesting that you say that you kind of felt it coming on, you know, weeks weeks ahead. Um, <clears throat> losing control or getting to a point where you've lost control through an anxiety attack or, you know, through, through any life situation is there's always like precursors to that yes. that show up. And I think it's so important for us to stay tuned. And, you know, the, the, the work that you integrate or within your daily life is, is so important as yes. well. Whether it's breath work, meditation, uh, you know, really grounding yourself because you never know when life is going to start putting more pressures on you and and keeping that denominator going is in a way protecting you from like you know blowing up into all that and i know i touched on breath work and, and i know that you do that as well in in, in your in your yeah. uh, men's work can you tell us a little bit about how you integrate breath work oh man so um when i first heard about it i did not prescribe to it at all I think okay breath work what the hell is breath yeah. work anyway it one of the meditations that i did um with you know, after a yoga session, mm. she incorporated some breath work and I was like, okay, well, there's, there's something here. I, I feel calmer just by counting the breath from, you know, four inhalations, four seconds in, hold for four seconds, exhale yeah. for four seconds. They call it the four. box. The box yeah, the breathing box method, breathing, yeah. something so simple. And the more I've learned and looked into breath work and you realize that breath is what keeps us alive. And you think, okay, well, there's obviously, obviously something in that. Yeah. Um, I started looking into, and Marina again, my partner, she's huge on breath work and she was always someone that's pushing me to go do it and I was so apprehensive at the beginning, but I love it now. Nice. And I learned something recently about Soma breath work, which is about breathing in a rhythm, followed by um, an exhale and a hold for a while, and then a deep inhale. Um, very similar to the Wim Hof breathing yeah. method, which yeah, yeah. has profound benefits. And it takes you to a place where you start to really feel this DMT, dopamine high. Interesting, yeah. And you see colors, and but what- it So it's really activating your penile gland. Exactly. Okay. But building that into like your everyday morning or whenever you feel times of stress, calms the, the nervous system down, puts you in a fantastic state. And when I do it in the morning, I just feel centered, grounded, ready for the day. Nice. You know, couple that with meditation and journaling and also my working out, working out is a pillar of mine. You know, those three things every day. Nice. Every day. Nice. There'll be some days where maybe I don't do yeah. it or it's a bit of a different method. A hundred percent. I think for me, the, the power of breath work is sometimes, you know, in, in my day to day sort of, you know, whether work or something else, I find myself sometimes in situations where I need to ground myself. Yes. And it's not, you know, you're not on the mat, you're not alone with yeah. an incense on and you've got that space. Yeah, you're actually yeah. in the middle of the shit, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got a choice and that being conscious of your thought and your internal dialogue, which is which is a. I guess for me even was like a difficult place to get into to start with where I'm not like just firing off yes. straight away whatever comes to my mind and and when I realize okay I really need to like ground myself now because otherwise <laughs> you know it's not going to be good so it, deploying breath work there yes. is so powerful so powerful and I've done it a few times before uh, public speaking for yeah. example yeah, yeah. where my nerves are going and I'm feeling like a bit jittery yeah. and I know someone like Tony Robbins would say bring that energy up but I'm like no I need to bring that energy yeah, down yeah, yeah. I speak quite fast so even then I'm like, okay, okay slow I, need to, down. I need to slow this yeah, down. Yeah, so <laughs> that, just that box breathing breath work, for example, really helps to do that. Nice. So nice. yeah, definitely something that I encourage, you know, when anyone's feeling a little bit overwhelmed, a bit stressed, just take a breath, like yeah. a real slow breath, you know? I mean, th this, this, you know, segues also to, to um, a topic that I wanted to discuss with you is the ego. Mm. A lot of men, um, I guess, in my opinion, I think a lot of men especially get kind of like, engulfed in the idea of living up to standards, people's standards, you know, and li live within that ego yep. uh, shadow. And the ego is a manifestation of both uh, the conscious and unconscious. Yes. And a lot happens in our unconscious um, that, you, that dictates how we show up in the world and how we project ourselves. Yep. And it's normally in the situations where we don't have much control that the unconscious comes out. Yep. Um, so in your opinion, uh, have you done shadow work uh, with, with your groups? And, and can you tell us a little bit about like how do you deploy shadow work and what is shadow work? I talk about shadow work actually from my perspective of what's happened with me. Sure. Um, when I was challenged by my coach about my ego and he made me bring up a scenario where my ego was at play. And it was uh, this is the example I gave was when I was arguing with my partner, trying to win an argument. Yeah. And uh, he said, right, okay. So you're in an argument with your partner. What's happened? Okay, well, she's expressed how she's feeling about something that I did. Okay, fine. Uh, why are you arguing? Well, that, she shouldn't feel like that. Mm. First of all, first thing, every feeling is valid. Denial, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Every feeling is valid. She's allowed to feel what she feels. Yeah. What are you really arguing about? Yeah. Well, she's wrong. I didn't do that. 
Okay, so you just want to be right. Yeah. Yes. Why? Go keep going on the whys. Okay. Yeah. Why? Well, I don't want her to think that I caused something and and it makes me feel bad that I was that I did something. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's not right. It's not fair. Okay. Why does that matter? Mm. Well, I want her to like me. I don't want her to hate me or, or you know or, or not love me. Mm. Why? Well, because I love her and. Right, okay, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> so your ego is trying to protect you yeah. from a sub, sub <laughs> an unconscious biased kind of place, right? And I get that. The ego is fantastic. Like the ego does have a job, protect you. But in the times when you're working with when you're with your partner and it's she expresses how she's feeling, the ego is not needed. Mm. We don't know how to switch that off or how to, or when to use our ego, you know? I don't even know when the right time is to use my ego to be honest because I don't really think personally there is much need for it. I encourage my men to drop the ego. Mm. Let's see who you really are, and that's okay. Interesting. You know, be safe. Be wrong. You know. You know. You can. You can be safe in that space. And it's more important to try and drop the ego in the real world, like yeah. not in you know, not in your safe space. Like, how, how do you drop your ego when you're out doing you're doing your job and 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 really act from a place of truthness and vulnerability as well? Yeah. So when you're able to go into a place where you know who you are, mm. and you're truly grounded in your being. You won't need your ego to protect you or to show up in a particular way. You just yeah. are that guy. When you yeah. see a guy walking around with his shoulders and chest up mm. and he's not even, he's just the friendliest guy in the room and you think, mm. oh, that's a man grounded. He doesn't care mm. about how he looks and he's trying to impress anyone. He just is. Yeah. So men that are listening, if you feel like you've got to show up somewhere and be some type of way, what are you really hiding from? Mm. That's the shadow work there. Look at yourself, really. What are you protecting? hundred yeah, percent. What, what are you scared of? And I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, it, there's a lot of power in understanding who we are. Yes. And I think, you know, self-realization is, is super important. And I yeah. think there's a lot of times people get, you know, go through life and they start putting on attributes to, to their character without even realizing it. Um, and my question is like, how many times have you really sat down with yourself and really got to see, in a way, like practice the seeing yourself in the mirror, you know, understanding what are, you, what are your bad traits? What are your good traits? You know, what, what do you really need to work on? Um, and be conscious of it. And I think not, you know, I, I also like, I mean, I don't do that enough as well. And yeah. it's, it's important for us to, 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 to get into that. 100% agree. And what I want to encourage is that we don't get to a place where we need to do that yeah. because something bad has happened. Exactly. Something big has happened. Yeah, exactly. You know, like I looked at, myself and and try to understand my relationship behavior my toxic behavior with women only after shit hit the fan and you know i Mm. broke up with my girlfriend and all the things happened and i had to end up speaking with my coach about it but unfortunately that's also sometimes the way that life goes like you know you need that you need that loss yeah yeah that reason yeah. Sometimes you've got to hit rock bottom before you rise up. Here, some of the some of the great stories of men and women who have done amazing things hit rock bottom. Like mm. for example, Dwayne Johnson, idol of mine. Yeah. He, you know, he talks about his story of how he had seven dollars in his pocket and he didn't know what to do and you know he had to do all everything it took. He 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 hit the rock hit rock yeah, bottom. So, you know, hit, yeah. So seven bucks a production company as well, right? That's yeah. that's a cool story. Yeah. He's, I love his stories. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of men that go through life without the need to hit that rock bottom state. Yep. Um, how important it is, do you think, for them to, to, to do the work? Because I think there's a lot of power there in, in terms of like, if life presents you yes. with a situation that, that kind of will force you to stop yes. and think about yourself, you know, that could be a big loss, that could be like a big realization. Um, but if you're not presented with that, with that life situation, you know, how important it is for you to really go out there and do the work to understand uh, yourself? Paramount every single man if we collectively move forward as Mm. men to understand ourselves more deeply to learn to drop the ego Mm. face our shadows will make the world a safer place for our women Mm -hmm. for men in general for ourselves for our children the world will change and that's why i'm doing what i'm doing i'm trying to redefine masculinity Mm. especially in the uae middle east because we where there's a lot of prejudice around there's loads of prejudice and there's a lot of expectation for men to be a particular way yeah. Do you know how many men that I work with that say I am unhappy with my life, I'm unhappy with my partner, I'm stressed with my job, I'm mm. unhappy with my job, I don't know who I am, what is my purpose? Mm. And when I really get down to it, those questions change. I'm scared to be vulnerable with my partner. I don't really know what it is that my passion is. I've, mm. I've been stifling my voice. I'm not honest with my partner. I'm not honest with myself. 
I'm scared that I'm not a good enough dad. When you get to those deep questions, yeah, you yeah. really find out what these guys are really about. And it's not, I'm unhappy with my life. What a broad statement. So yeah, men, yeah. men come to me because they want to be more successful in their job. I end yeah. up working with them on their morning routines and saying, right, how can we find more time for yourself? You know? Yeah. How can we get you to a place where you can walk through life more grounded, be more comfortable, be more open with your partner? You know? Yeah. I work with men yeah. that are having multiple relationships and they're married and have families. I'm thinking, right, okay, are you happy being this man? Mm. Is this a man in his highest power? Is this a grounded man? Mm. What, what kind of man would you like to be? What kind of man would you want your son to be? What role model would you like to be? These questions help give perspective. And, and add that moral compass, right? Exactly. How important in your experience and with all the men that you've, you've sat with, um, how many of them do you think have tuned into their moral compass and how important is it is to have one? I believe everyone's got a moral compass. Mm. Sometimes we can lose sight. You know, we, because what we do when we go unchecked and we only have ourselves, again, as men, we only speak to ourselves. Yeah. We justify things. We justify yeah. things. Oh, my, my uh, partner isn't, a, yeah. isn't doing certain things for me. So, you know, of course I've got to, got to do what man's yeah. got to do. But when you have a brotherhood, when you have men that you can trust, that will say, dear, look, bro, mm. this isn't right. You know what it is that you're doing. Mm. Is this the man that you want to be? Until you have those moments. And that conversation is powerful as well, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Until you have those moments with other men, especially, <clears throat> It can your hidden your moral compass will be hidden. Interesting. Or you'll f you'll push it down. Yeah. And and, and you covered by your own narrative. That's a very powerful thing as well because we all have that story in our head, right? To justify why something is is okay or yeah. is right. For somebody that's never been into a men's circle, what can they expect when they do step into one? Laughter, um, connection, brotherhood, uh, honesty, mm. raw honesty, um, emotions. Um, a man can come there and expect to be heard mm. and not judged. No shame. The things that are said in this circle, in this group, are profound and deep. And some of the things that are shared are shared for the first time. Sometimes for the first time, leaving that man's lips and every single man there holds space for him. Mm. Pats his chest, mm. holds their hand up, puts their hand on the heart and says, brother, you're welcome as you are. And that's powerful stuff. And for, you know, the circle isn't for every man because it takes time for a man to want to be heard and for want to want to speak. To arrive to that circle state yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if somebody is, you know, like is curious about being, part, you know, being part of that work in general, but is still not there yet, um, how would you, you know, how would you invite them in? How would you open that space for them? So on, other than just having a safe space with me, you're more than welcome to get in touch with me. I would recommend Finding someone that you're closest to mm. and um, just having a heart to heart conversation with them. Just trying to expose a part of yourself. Maybe even ask for some feedback. Mm. You know, what are some areas of my life where you think that I could be more open? Or where are areas in my life where you think that I'm not being the most truthful or I'm hiding something? Mm. Or, you know, where in my life do you think that I'm being defensive? When we Doing get a check-in with, with uh, people cl close to you, yeah. Check-ins, yeah, yeah. Like One of the areas that I got a lot from was really getting to understand my dad. And that happened during back when I was back in London during lockdown um, to get therapy. Because a lot of who I am is because of my father and a lot of mm. things that I didn't say that I wanted to say. And we used to go on 5K walks every morning. And we took that as therapy time. I didn't tell him it was therapy time, mm. but it was. And I asked him about his childhood. And when you start to hear that a man like that can still speak so vulnerably when you know how to ask the right question and you can be there, that's powerful. You know, nice. and that was difficult. Obviously, I've been doing this for a while now, so yeah, I, can, yeah. I know how to navigate that. It was so challenging, but I know how to have that. So find someone that, you're, that you feel safe with <coughs> and just have a chat. Because I had friends back home that I couldn't have a chat with, you know, and they it wanted it to be like jokes all the time. Mm. But it's really refreshing when you can have that conversation, you know? How much of your complexities or, or the challenges that you faced as an adult man um, do you think come from or inherited from your father? Yeah, a lot. A lot of them. You know, I saw my dad marry three times. Um, I don't know the ins and outs of those relationships. Uh, he left them. No one ever left him, so maybe there's something in that. Um, had seven kids. 
Mm. He's got three little kids now, even though he's 60 oh, years wow. old. Um, but I guess there was something there, you know, in around like commitment. And I think what it showed me was that I don't want to get married three times. And that also played a part in the way that I felt around commitment and being afraid to settle in a relationship. So I didn't. And yeah. whenever things got a little bit difficult, I ran. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think something about not facing what's really happening mm. is something I might have took it, taken from my father. You know, and really all of the problems in my relationships were me. Interesting. And I think uh, on an energetic level, I mean, you know, a lot of people talk about these cycles that you inherit from 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 different generations. And, yeah. and it's so important to try and like understand these cycles and try to break them, because yeah. if you don't tune in and if you don't really realize that you are getting sucked into those kind of cycles, you're going to be passing them on to a new generation yeah. as well. So I think the key thing there is, is that, you know, there's a lot of work that people do when trying to understand the past, which I think is great. Yeah. But how much can you go back and how much mm. time can you spend there? We need to look to our present mm -hmm. and our future. It's all good and well knowing that because of your dad, this happened or you're this way. Great. What are you going to do about it now? You know, that's why I think men's work, shadow work, yeah. speaking to therapists, you know, speaking to your buddies, opening yeah. up, having these, that is already going to break mm. anything that you felt or grew up with or characteristics and traits that you have in your yeah. life. And to me, I mean, I've, I've had some powerful experiences where I've been on a crossroad that I remember that my father was on. And it was a conscious decision whether, like, what decision I take next mm -hmm. would either have me, like, do the same thing that he's done in that specific moment, mm -hmm. or I'll go a different way. And, but I don't know how many people are conscious about these cycles, because sometimes you can just take a decision and you're like, oh, shit, this actually is exactly what my dad did, and yeah. I'm just reliving him in a way, right? Um, but there was a few things that I, I was pretty adamant that I didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. So I think, for me, that kind of was a conscious moment that I was like, wait a minute. Like, this is, this is a cycle that he's gone down through. Do I want to do that as well? So yeah, I think it's important. Got, uh, not everyone's got that awareness. Yeah. So that's brilliant. And also it depends on how much you know about your parents. It's true, 100%. You know? Yeah, yeah. Especially, like, again, in our cultures, our parents don't really tell us much. 100%. Yeah. So that's a, that's a struggle right there. And, we, and I, you know, again, I work, a lot of men and women that I work with are 30s and 40s and they just wish they could talk to their parents mm. and have conversations with them. So like, I have an exercise that we do I get them to write a letter to their parents and they can choose whether they want to give that to their parent or not or they can choose to give it to someone like me to read it okay but then i also get them to write the letter back to themselves from their parent oh so wow there's a full okay. healing within themselves nice because not everyone's got the opportunity to to speak to the parents, speak to the parents. Yeah. yeah i mean 100 percent. both my parents passed away now so i think right. I, I understand that mm. and it is super powerful to to close the gaps right because there's a lot of Things sometimes that you're, you know, you've got regret around or, or certain yeah. emotions that are unresolved. Yes. So it's important to like visit those and, and, and work through them as well. Um, very powerful. After very all, powerful. like how many, th if, you know, we spend a lot of our time being stressed out and overwhelmed with things that we can't control. So that's why we need the tools mm. to just get through that pit, you know? So maybe it's a conversation with your parents through um, a method like writing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Can you tell us any any stories of, of how, you know, like how really profound could, could men's circles and men work be for people that um, were going through maybe a, a period of their time that they were a bit lost or, um, you know, how much grounding can that work provide a, yeah. a, a man? Okay, that's a good question. Um, so again, I'll be thinking back to myself and my journey and, and actually how I can relate that back to the men that I work with. Only until you've faced yourself can you move through to the, to the next level, mm. to a higher version of yourself, and it's gonna get uncomfortable. I encourage the men, lean into uncomfortability. You know, we, um, you might need a man like me or another coach to ask the uncomfortable questions, but you need to be ready for it. It's not gonna be easy. You know, you gotta sit with the, you know, why are you a serial cheater? You know, mm. why, do you, why are you aggressive? Mm. Like what makes you angry? You know, let's, let's find out where that goes. But on the other side of that, you will be free. What you're looking for is freedom. From the patterns. From all of yeah, it, yeah. from everything. I'm freedom from stress. When, you when men come to me and say, oh, I just wanna be free, I'm stressed. I wanna bring men freedom and peace. Well, that comes through difficult times. Like, mm. I'm not gonna lie, like, it's not easy going through this stuff. 
And you might even think you overcome something. And I'm sure I've got loads more work to do. But the fact that I was having, able to have an anxiety attack just a few yeah. days ago, like, yeah. there's work for me to do. There's always work. There's always work. The work <laughs> yeah. does not end, but the awareness is beautiful. Yeah. And we can move through life in a much more profound way. An example of where I'm able to be more connected is with my partner. By me being more aware of my ego, I'm able to have deeper conversations with my partner. Now when she tells me that she's feeling a certain way, even if I react, I'm like, whoa, calm down. Mm. Let me just drop the ego for a second. Let me tap into my heart. <clears throat> What's happening here? And that will change the game for everything. You know, men want connections. We love being connected, whether it's with our parents, our partners, but communication is key. Yeah. But we are blocked in communication because we're not really encouraged to communicate, to be expressive, to be emotional, to be vulnerable. You know, so a big element of shadow work is let's uncover some of these imaginary barriers that are in place that have been placed there through years and years and years and actually generations of, of what masculinity means. Which again is like this is this imaginary sheet that's just part social of conditioning us. as well. Yeah. Social conditioning. Yeah, yeah. On the other side of breaking that down, will be uh, enhanced relationships, mm. closer bonds with your kids, your parents, a, a, an ability to step up at work, success in your in your businesses. All of the things that you is that you want and you desire come from just accessing parts of yourself that you've been suppressing. Yeah, and it's it's the power of holding a safe space for people, allowing them to to express. Like I think uh, you know a lot of the men, so, like they just express in different ways, and sometimes it's through sports or you know competition or yeah. there's different ways or oh, yeah, even. Sorry, I actually digress away from the men's circle. So bringing yeah. that to the men's circle situation, I've had men come to the circle where they didn't know what to expect. Yeah. They came away from that circle saying, you know what, I had some really bad thoughts today. I had some really bad thoughts today that I don't, mm. I didn't feel comfortable sharing and I shared them and just being heard, it makes me want to come back here and it makes me want to start my own men's circle. Wow, and I've had men start men's yeah. circles because they've seen the power of it. And that's what I want to encourage, you know, men feeling that they can feel safe to be themselves and be vulnerable and that relief. Mm. And I've had men come back to me and say, you know, what? I went home just happier to be back with my family mm. because I was able to get some things off my chest. It wasn't that big a deal, but it was overwhelming because I had no one to talk to about it. And I couldn't tell my mom, couldn't tell my wife. Interesting. I didn't feel like I could. I didn't feel safe there. Interesting. So that circle is healing. I mean, we talked a little bit about, of course, a lot about uh, the vulnerability of the work that you do in, within a men's circle yeah. environment. Uh, part of men's work is also getting connected with the hunter gatherer gatherer energy as well mm -hmm. and you know that warrior energy that sort of like wrestling energy um how much of that and for a lot of men they don't they don't get in touch with that as well no. how much of that is important to go through it's important to channel our inner warrior in a way that isn't toxic in a way that isn't aggressive for the sake of being aggressive again linked to our ego now i don't do this work with my when that i work with i haven't found that space to do that yet yeah. but i have done this work yeah and it does involve a little bit of wrestling and yeah, it's yeah. Like, and it's camaraderie yeah. yeah right it's also what i have done also is is anger therapy and anger work you know being able to channel rage and letting it out is so important because we are not encouraged to do that either mm. and it becomes suppressed yeah or we, or we pick fights in clubs and bars and any little thing that might trigger us. I mean, we, we, we think that we're, you know, we're, we're trying to come from a moral place and mm. no, he did this, so I've got to knock him out. No, it comes from a place of insecurity, fear, or something that you're lacking. Mm. Doing work around tapping into that kind of energy allows us to channel it in a healthy way. We need healthier ways to channel it. Going to the gym is healthy. Yeah. But going yeah, to the exactly. gym whenever you're feeling stressed or down and not processing your feelings and your emotions isn't yeah. healthy. Yeah. You know, go to the gym, great. I'm, I fully, I'm all, I'm yeah, all yeah. about that. But if you don't talk about what's going on, or if you don't find a healthy way to channel that rage, like for example, smashing and just punching pillows, yeah. screaming, shouting, hitting the floor, that's okay. Yeah. Do it. Be, make, sure, make sure in a safe environment, put some music on, put your headphones on, just mm. beat it out of you. And what will come out and what I've seen countless times are tears. Interesting, okay. You know, because underneath anger is frustration and sadness. And when you can get to that, you can start to understand what's really going on. Very powerful. I have a lot of friends sometimes that don't have the opportunity to connect with their bodies. Yes. As men as well. Yes. You know, they've maybe uh, weren't really too, too much into sports. Um, mm -hmm. They haven't been feeling confident about themselves or the bodies as well. Yep. So 
what type of journey, what type of work they should look into to try and be more you know, comfortable and, and show, up, <clears throat> sorry, show up in the world with open shoulders and open chest and really feel that grounded you know, when, they, when they walk into the room. Let me ask you a question first of all. Do you love your body? Not so much. Right, there we go. No. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how much we do right, to fix our external. Yeah. The feeling is within. Yeah. Right? Uh, I used to hate my body. Yeah. There are still bits about me I'm like, mm, it could be a bit better, but I yeah. used to like, you know, really, I got, I'm a hairy man. I would never take my shirt off. Never. I was chubbier. I would never take my shirt off. Mm. I was to the point where I wouldn't wear shorts because I had wow. hairy legs. And again, I grew up in a worry white area. Men's Health Magazine was all hairless men. Yeah, yeah. My best friend was The black. idea of the ideal man, right? <laughs> That's right, like, the Adonis, the, yeah, Greek, yeah. the Greek Adonis. Spend more time with men. Spend more time with men, Yeah. right? In a healthy way. Spend, like one of the things that I saw most, especially being in, like in, here in the UAE, yeah. people take their shirt off. And fine, a lot of people do wear, keep their shirts on, but you see every kind of man yeah. on the beach. Yeah. In the locker room. You see every kind of man in the locker room. Like just be around more men in a way which is, I won't say naked, but at least mm. where you have no choice but to just be and see more types of skin, more types of head body. Take part in practices like yoga, mm. you know, and, and animal flow and movement and, mm. and things that allow you to, well, you have no choice but to be with your body, you know? Stand in the mirror, naked. Mm. Look at your body and tell yourself how much you love it. Speak out loud affirmations, you know, and look at your feet and think, wow, these feet are on, I'm on my feet all day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Exercise some gratitude for your body. Yeah, yeah. Our bodies do amazing yeah. things. Like, you know, yeah. we can't help the skin we're in. We're born to this is, but we are, we are a, you know, um, a universal soul mm. that just happens to be housed in this skin and this, and this body. Like we are ethereal, man. Like, you yeah. know, we're, we're, we're beyond the body. You know, the body just happens to be what it is. Again, comparison is what makes you feel the way that you do. Yeah. If you just loved it and just saw it, I'm like, oh man, like this, this thing, this does amazing yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't care so much about uh, a little bit of like uh, love handles yeah. or hair or whatever. But it it's is. how you feel. I think like the, there's you know there's many people that are chubby and and, yep. and you know are not, are not really you know they don't walk around with a six pack, but also they walk into a room and they have that confidence. And I think there's they practice like you said. I mean, animal flow is a big one. Yep. Um, yoga as well, and and just understanding or or being confident in in who you are yep. and showing up in the world. You know with without the stigma of like, uh, you know, I've got a few kgs off or on me or, or whatever. And I think, you know, the, the, there's a lot of power when you're able to get to that state and really reflect your, your energy through the, you know, the shadows of like, oh, I'm not sure about my body and the rest exactly. of it. So. But all of that comes down to, I don't feel like I'm enough because I don't love myself. Yeah. It yeah, always yeah. comes back to that. If you loved yourself, yeah. you wouldn't care. You would show up and you, especially when you love your gift, mm. the music you do, uh, you know, your, the, the, the videos you can create, you can show up in a room full of like directors and you just, you just, you just feel confident because you're confident in what you do. Mm. If you are confident in who you are and you love yourself, nothing can touch you. Interesting, yeah. It always comes back to that. It's not yeah, about your 100%, body. Yeah, 100%, 100%. You're, you will naturally be like this. Yeah. You know, when you go to like an ecstatic dance or, you, and you're, or, yeah. or you're in a club and you will, just, you will just flow how you want to flow because you won't care exactly. what anyone else is thinking. That's a big one. Yeah, that's, and to be honest, for me, I've, I've only recently experienced that when like when going into an ecstatic dance or uh, even a, a, a contact dance uh, yeah. sessions. And I thought at the very beginning when I was looking at it, I was like, what, a, what is this? <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no way I'm going to be rolling around the floor right. with like random right. people I've never met. Right. Um, but the, 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 honestly, the power that you get when you walk away from it, just being comfortable and confident in your body and the way that you can move as well. And yeah. you'll move in ways that you've not moved in right. as well. And what is that? That's freedom. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. ultimate exactly. freedom. Freedom exactly. from any of the shackles that you had. Because exactly. you don't care. I mean, when I was younger, I couldn't dance unless I was drunk. The, the, the fear of what other people think is, is a big one. And I think that, you know, ripples down to not just the way that we move, but also what do we do in life? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of times that you don't want to do something because you're afraid of what other people think. Right. So once you get over that barrier in your mind, a lot, a lot can open as well. Do you face that? Have you faced that? Uh, all the time. Yeah. All the time. And I need to, uh, you know, I still need to check in and say, well, why do I, why do I care what other people think? Is it something that, that's going to affect people negatively? And if it's not, then, you know, why do I care what they think? Yeah. 
Um, and it's it's so it's uh, the thing is it's important for us to keep reminding ourselves about yeah. those you know um, uh, pillars and more more compass in a way. And again, it's a thing, especially again. I look at um, you know I'm from an Indian Pakistani heritage, uh, doctor, lawyer, engineer. Like come on, like these are, these are if you're not doing these things, like who are you really? Yeah, true, you know? true. So it's it's a it's a difficult one um, for men to face to be someone in society to be revered and seen as. Yeah. But normally it's because it's what our parents want. So that they can tell people in their generation that oh, my son is no, this. my son's a doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's to an give easy them, to give them pride. Right? Exactly, puts a lot of pressure on us. Yeah, you yeah. Know? feeding that ego, right? Collective ego, in a way, as well. Exactly. Um, Adil, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Thank Thanks you a lot so. for coming on and, and sharing a bit of your journey and and also the work that you do. Yeah. Uh, for anybody that's listening and and want to connect with you, I'll leave your details in the description of this podcast. Um, and again, thanks a lot for sharing your story. Thank you so much, brother. Thanks. <laughs> Amazing.